Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. Let's go. <laughs> All right, Hats. Brendo, how are you? I'm um, pretty well, mate. Uh, well, well, you know, should we go? Should we go there? Do we want to see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, so, mate's I, well. Mate's well, well, I'm in ISO. My daughter's got COVID. Uh, I dare say, in the next few days, we'll all get it. Uh, and what are you doing? Uh, my whole house has it, and um, including me. And um, I'm fine. I just sound a bit crappy. So, um, uh, yeah the audio might be a bit a little bit disjointed because in three different locations today because we have a guest um oscar mary oscar how are you mate yeah i'm good thanks so much for having me on guys great to be here do you want to explain uh where you're from or what you're what you're doing and, and how it relates to bitcoin mate yeah 100 percent. so yeah my name's oscar mary i'm based in london in the uk and uh i'm building fountain podcast which is fundamentally it's a podcast app but the difference with fountain is two things really number one you can create and share clips from the podcast you're listening to so if you hear an amazing insight or an amazing uh, piece of analysis that you want to share with a friend you can do that as a clip rather than just sending the full episode can get into more about like why we think that this is going to be massive for podcasting in the future and then the second big thing and how this relates into Bitcoin is on Fountain, you can stream Bitcoin over the Lightning Network to your favorite podcasters as you listen. You can also send what's called a boost, which is kind of like a tip with a message. Um, so Fountain gives you the ability to actually support your favorite podcast as you listen with Bitcoin over the Lightning Network. And we think that's really exciting. Uh, and yeah, there's just so much more that we can do with that. So yeah, happy to answer any questions uh, in more detail. Obviously, there's a lot there. Awesome. So we um, we got the Two Bit Idiots podcast um, and we are on 30 something. Don't know, Brendan, you might know. Um, and we've been going since about last August and probably found Fountain uh, maybe, what would it be, Brendan, like two or three months ago? Something like oh, that. Well, yeah, um, probably, but we didn't actually get it active until I think we probably only had no. maybe four or five episodes. Um, um, oh, yeah, something like that. And we haven't, yeah. we kind of haven't shut up about it since we did that, Oscar. Um, we like it. I think it's a great idea. Um, mm. So, but I want to go back if we can, if you're happy to, t- to tell your own Bitcoin story a little bit and maybe your professional, uh, uh, you know, quite other qualifications or skills. Um, and then what's led you to be kind of running Fountain and where that's all come from. Is you happy to do that? Yeah, of course. Happy to, to share the, the background. So my background with Bitcoin is I had a friend back in, uh, it, it was the end of 2013 who mentioned it to me and he was just like, you need to get some basically because this is the future. And I didn't, really pay attention but I knew he was a really smart guy so I listened to him and was very lucky there Um, and then I kind of forgot about it for years and um, kind of started paying attention again in around the 2016 2017 time frame that's when I started looking at it in depth and became a believer in it as uh, you know the future of the monetary system of the world and you know really got behind it and believed in it. At, in that time, I studied engineering uh, at university and had been working in tech um, for a number of years. I didn't think that I'd ever work professionally anywhere in to do with Bitcoin, um, but was always very passionate about audio, massive podcast fan, massive podcast listener, and had always wanted to do something in that space i actually had a previous business um building uh, games and interactive stories on the amazon alexa platform so i was quite into audio and it was actually at the beginning of 2021 so last year when me and my business partner nick 
started thinking about what would eventually become Fountain. And we actually started the idea not with the Bitcoin payments in mind. We started with this idea of the clipping because we both believe that there's so much incredible content that's locked away in podcast episodes and it's quite difficult to discover. And we wanted to solve that problem just because of our personal interests in in the format, basically. So for example, like think of your podcast and the back catalog. You've probably had got so many hours of content there. And if a new person comes to your podcast for the first time, like where do they go? Which episode do they pick first? You know, how do they get a flavor for what you guys are about, what you're talking about? And we think if you can actually allow people to break up podcasts into these little clips and then be creative with those clips. So another feature we have is playlists and then allow people to actually follow each other within the podcast app. We believe that it's just a much better way to actually discover new podcast content and also enjoy podcast content that you don't necessarily listen to every episode with. Because I think another problem that many people have is so many podcast episodes in in the feed each week like how do you even get to all of them so that's where we really started with fountain because of our yeah our belief that it's such an amazing uh media format it's so impactful because you have this like intimate relationship between the listener and the host um so that was the start of 2021 and then as we were building out the you know the first version of fountain with the the clipping um, we were following what was happening with podcasting 2.0, which is the movement that Adam Curry and Dave Jones have created, uh, which aims to preserve the open nature of podcasting as opposed to the walled gardens that Apple and Spotify are trying to create. Um, so we were following that very closely. And when they kind of formalized the um, value block tag, which is what actually allows a podcaster to accept Bitcoin over the Lightning Network. Um, when we saw that, you know, I was already very, very, uh, I was a massive believer in Bitcoin. And I was just like, this is a no brainer. We have to make this a big part of what we're doing with Fountain. And so we, we implemented it straight away. And since that time, we've doubled down on it essentially and built a lot more tools, not only for listeners, but for podcasters to help them get started. And we've got a bunch of more features that are on the way around that too. So yeah, hopefully that's a good high level. <laughs> so did you start Fountain um, without Bitcoin in mind then? Like, is this like a pre 2.0 kind of a venture for you? Yeah, exactly. So wow. the, the first goal of Fountain was to make it easy for listeners to discover and share the best insights that are within podcasts, because I believe that... and. Like, here's a great example that I'm sure your listeners will really understand. Take the topic of Bitcoin itself. Anyone that is a big believer in Bitcoin probably listened to hundreds of hours of podcast episodes about it. And that's a big part of the journey and the education. If someone new comes along to that topic, are you expecting them to go back into the back catalogs of all of these podcasts and go through that same journey. I I would say that that premise doesn't make any sense because some of the content will be outdated. um, Some of the things will have changed. And also who's got the hundreds of hours spare in their lives to go back. So yeah, we started Fountain to try and solve that problem, which is how do you, from these amazing podcast episodes that are quite long, how do you surface the best bits and share them with the people that um, are, in, are in your lives? And how do you discover those bits from others as well? So that's what we set out to do uh, with Fountain initially. So Oscar, I'm a, a late 2015, early 2016 guy. Um, never really a shit coiner, but um, didn't understand Bitcoin to begin with. But it took me to probably mid-18 before I really became a solid believer because I saw it fly and I saw it crash and then I started to learn. Um, but it took, so it, it took me years, put it that way, and I used to scramble around for information, trying to find good information. I'd spend time on YouTube. I would read books if I could find them. I would listen to shit coiners and try and avoid them. And, but then, but, but taking Brendo, 
you start was it 2020 brendo yeah um, Fe- february 2020 for me so but effectively i had become the curated yes. list for you yes definitely um, and and so you so for all that um you, you've just been able to just do what i did in in a period of four years and probably in a period of about six months and then what fountain's really doing is just for specifically for podcasting if i get if i'm getting this right in the terms of the clips and stuff like that is taking that curated you know i could give somebody a list of 10 podcasts to follow but if you could actually just listen to 400 clips or five minutes long you could almost have the same i mean you probably wouldn't have the same conviction but you certainly you certainly might have some of the knowledge um so it's just the speed at which somebody can pick it up is just hugely faster is is that fair is that what you're you're trying to do exactly yeah and it's not to say that this premise of discovering insights through short clips takes away the need to go and do a deep dive and you know listen to the full episodes it just gives you a way to navigate which con which episodes you want to actually listen to so for example again sticking with the bitcoin topic i have a playlist of clips on fountain it's called bitcoin and there's about 35 clips on there that i've built up over the past year and i like it's my belief not all of the clips were created by me on that playlist there's there are what i think are incredible insights about bitcoin that actually summarize some of the key uh, you know, important points that we all believe in really, really well from incredible speakers. So, a so we're not on there. In... We're not on that list, then. Obviously, <laughs> you're you're <laughs> not on that list. <laughs> I'm not on that list. <laughs> Sorry, man. Um, but yeah, but anyone can create these these playlists yeah. as well, and that's the really important thing as well, is because different content will speak to different people, you know, with different levels of impact. So. You could have the exact same message and the exact same facts, but if it's delivered in a slightly different way, then it might have more or less of an impact on somebody. So, you know, everybody's different. So that's why we, by giving this power of, you know, t- servicing these insights from podcasts to the listener, not just the host, because hosts are already doing this. You know, they, they will publish an episode, create a clip, share it on Twitter. They're mm. already doing this. We're just saying, why can't the listener do that too? And why can't each listener pick their own favorite moment in the show, save that, share that, curate that, and, and just give people an opportunity to discover through it? Are you able to see what's happening practically with the listeners? Like, who's creating more? Is it the, the show hosts that are creating more clips or is it the listeners creating more, more clips or what's happening in, in practice? Yeah, so I would say it's definitely... Um, the majority are listener created clips however okay. some some hosts um are some show hosts are using it quite significantly too so yeah there's there's like a small group of shows that are basically using fountain as their clipping tool to go and promote on social media because you can also share the clips as videos on social media um but yeah most of the clips are listener driven which is really cool to see and also if you're following somebody on fountain you'll see their new clips come up on your home screen when they're created. So the, the other thing that's cool about this, which I personally really like, is it's like a window into somebody's podcast listening, which is really cool because podcast listening is very, normally it's very, uh, it's very private and it's very intimate. And we're not making it public by default. It's all optional, but it's quite cool. Like if someone's interested in a random topic that you're not really interested in, it's quite cool to every now and again just hear like a little minute segment of of that episode or that that topic area. Um, mm. Yeah, it's just an interesting way to to understand other people's interests. I mean, I oh, literally right. just take, sorry, Brenda, go. On. Oh no, you go. All I was going to say was no. Somebody just gave me a a recommendation when you uh, respect somebody already, and then they give you a recommendation of a podcast. Um, which is just something that happened recently. I've just and I've just listened to a podcast that was one that was wonderful on Fountain. Um, but um, but it's you know it's it's what was it? I'm just looking at it right now. It was an hour and a half long, and I did listen to the whole thing and I enjoyed the whole thing. But I wouldn't necessarily do that with it on every occasion if somebody said, "Oh, you should listen to this," because because you've just got this massive list. Yeah. Um. So if you've got if you can you know pick I don't know 10, 15 clips 
and then and then and then go on and find if you, the one that really resonates with you, you can go to that. Um, exactly, yeah. And on Fountain, you can just click through directly to the episode. So you listen to the clip, and then you can just click through straight away and play the episode. Yeah. yeah okay. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so my question was just going to be because you were saying, I guess you know, if someone's listening to an episode, they can um, send sats via boosting. Yeah. Um, so we and we've had a, certainly had a few, and I guess we can talk about Bodog's lovely comments. Um, but what's the difference between a boost and a stream when it comes up? Yeah, great question. So. The streaming money part is only possible with the Bitcoin Lightning Network because there's never been a payment technology that allows you to send micropayments at, mm. that are so small for basically no fees. Um, so that's like the really exciting thing about this is you can actually stream money per minute. And there's no other payment technology that allows you to do this. It just mm. simply doesn't exist. The idea behind streaming money is... I think it just shows the podcaster whether you're enjoying it or not. Like I, my average is normally I set 50 sats per minute and I stream that. And if I get halfway through the episode and then for whatever reason, don't finish it, then the money stops streaming. So it's just a way to basically pay um, for the amount that you listen to all yep. optional, of course. Yep. Um, and then the boosts are, you know, for when you want to, either thank the podcaster or write them a message, ask them a question, give them feedback, and also send them a larger amount. So typically, the streaming sats are quite small, quite low values. You know, I, I set 50 sats per minute, some set higher, some set lower. And also, you can change that depending on the episode. Um, but the boosts are normally much higher. So you might boost you know, 2,000 sats, 10,000 sats. Sorry, depending on the, the podcast or depending on each individual episode, is that? like Yeah, so you can, you have full control within Fountain. Uh, you can change the streaming value on any episode. You can, when you set up, when you create a boost, you can change the boost value. Um, so yeah, you have full control. Nice. Yeah. I mean, there's been, I can just think of a number of moments um, whilst I've been learning about Bitcoin. and. Frankly, this isn't just about Bitcoin, but it's about everything. But this is the Bitcoin's the focus for us. But um, um, yeah, like things that I've read that have just put in 10 words what I've been trying to think of for the last year and a half or something like that. And I had to be, you'd be at that moment, you'd be, you're, you'd be quite happy to press that boost button on for somebody, right? Mm, yeah. Um, and it's just make, I mean, it's just making it easy for people to do that. Um, and and but as you say, you don't have to. It's totally opt in. You can give nothing. You can just listen, and that's fine too. Do you notice that, um, or is it maybe too soon? I'm not sure. But um, that uh, podcasters are, or do you have even any oversight on this? Um, podcasters are changing their content based on boosting activity or streaming activity. Yeah, definitely. Great question, and this is so important because it's optional. Because it's part of the value for value model that Adam Curry kind of pioneered, um, it's really important for podcasters to actually use the boosts in their content and actually frame this model in the right way. And that's what we've seen in, in the data is that the podcasters that talk about value for value, that ask their listeners to support them, and that use the boost as part of the show content, they do much, much better. And a great, a great way to think about this is, um, you know, it's, I think it's Adam Curry that, that said this really well. And I would encourage anyone to go and listen to his interviews. There's a great one he did on the Mere Mortals podcast, another great, great one he did on the Kevin Rook show. There, there's some great, um, like overviews of the value for value model. And actually I also have a playlist on Fountain called value for value. So you can I was go gonna say, ha that have out. you, have you clicked them? <laughs> I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, good. But anyway, the, the, the analogy here is he says, don't ask for tips, ask for value. If you ask someone for a tip, they're going to give you a tip, which is a small amount. But instead, if you ask them, Hey guys, how much value did you get out of this episode? Did you enjoy it? Um, 
please please send me support based on the amount of value received if you receive if you receive no value don't send me anything but if you valued this hour that we've spent together send me what you think that hour was worth and then also you can do things like bring in a price analogy so you can say you know imagine one i like to use is just a cup of coffee right if you're out you buy a cup of coffee from you know somewhere how much is that going to cost you? Probably like four or five dollars or something. Um, if you can frame the hour of the podcast alongside that, you should be able to say to your listener, like, okay, do you think this hour was worth the same as a cup of coffee? Like, did you get the same enjoyment from it? If so, you know, maybe think about supporting me to, to that level. So I think that's one really important thing is that the podcasters and the hosts actually frame that value for value message and ask their listeners for support in the right way and then the second thing is just to use the boost as content so like have a segment at the end or the beginning or whenever to just read out all the boosts answer questions you know build build a bit of a discussion and a back and forth with the audience so i think those two things um if podcasters do those two they see much higher uh levels of income yeah, yeah cool. I mean, just let, let's just be honest about this, Brendan. Like, we we don't. We, what would I say? We, we're not. We've not done this so far to be paid, right? This is a, something we care about, and that we're doing it because we care about it. Yeah, right? oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but um, and we hope that somebody somewhere is getting some value from it, and you know, um, well, that's the that's reason. We, to, that's, that's the reason we kind of decided to record because we were just chatting anyway. So yeah, if, the, exactly. if there's one person that it helps other than Bodog, then it's all. <laughs> that, sorry, Bulldog is a troll. Bulldog, he's a good troll. We've had him on. No, he's, he's not a troll. He's my, he's my troll. I so have a personal troll. He's your troll, troll yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll read you some of the uh, <laughs> the fountain comments he's actually <laughs> sent, which is really frustrating because he's actually quite a generous uh, booster. <laughs> but, but he's, yeah. he's pretty... I find that. Frankly, I find, I find them hilarious. But anyway. Oh, no, um, they are. They're, they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. But, um, but yeah, so, we're, so let's... But, you know, we didn't do it to make money. However, the reality of it is both of us have day jobs um, and we are putting these out. We, we get together on generally a Thursday uh, evening um, and record a pod. And we put quite a lot of work into it. Brendo does a lot of audio. I do a lot of the, the sort of show notes and that kind of stuff. We're together, we put this thing out, right? And, and we're trying our best to get one out a week and we something, mostly, we, well, mostly we manage it, right? Mm. But if it was possible through, well, well, firstly, here's the thing I don't want to do. And no criticism of Marty, uh, Marty Bent, because I love Marty's content, right? Let's start there. But you have to get through 10 minutes of ad read yes. before you get to the show. Um, no. Now, yes, you can skip. <laughs> yes, you can skip. But you don't really want to because you value the guy's content. So you don't, you know, whatever. And generally, the, I'm okay with the ads that he's you know, reading from. Whoa, whoa, but, hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you saying you don't skip the ads? Oh, uh, do you know, the I'll call you truth, a liar right now. If, no, no, if you're... no, no. I tell you the honest truth is where, where I listen to somebody's pod and I feel they're a bit of a shit coiner, not looking at you, McCormack, I will skip his ads. Yeah, right? yeah. But where it's somebody I genuinely think, yeah, I don't want to skip your I don't skip the ads. I don't. So there you go. Uh, maybe I'm an idiot. But, I, but here's the thing. I, I don't want to... If, if there was another way, um, and in that way, way is potentially being supported by your audience there's no need for the ads yeah i'm quite happy to talk about we've been waxing lyrical about fountain for the last three podcasts right not because you guys asked us to just because we think it's good and, I, and I'm, i'd much prefer to do that like if somebody if you're looking for a plumber you know you want a friend to recommend a good plumber so you're happy that somebody does it so i just think the model is just far 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 superior um mm. and and i'm sure and it's not really a criticism of the guys who've done something else because it didn't exist before Right, this is pretty much a new model. Um, so is this leading into a question? I mean, <laughs> I guess guess what we're trying to do is get our pod to a point where we can cut down a day at work and do a bit more content. I, 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 is that something you're seeing yet with 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 uh, podcasters? Or so yeah, it's, it's and I agree with you totally. And I think one thing to recognise is it's still early, and there's a lot. There's a lot to solve before um, podcasters will be able to get this to match what they're getting currently from advertising revenue. 
So the thing I always say is right now, value for value through Lightning on apps like Fountain um, is not a replacement for your advertising revenue if you have it, because we're just not there yet. I think in a few years, it will be a credible alternative and you will be able to make the amounts that you would make from an advertiser. I think the reason that we're not quite there yet, there's a few, there's a few of them. The first is just the UX of onboarding a brand new listener to value for value, because obviously your audience will probably be, find it quite easy. You know, they know about Bitcoin, you know, they're not going to be put off by, you know, having to download another wallet and transfer over lightning. But if you're a podcaster talking about something completely different, that is actually a lot of friction, you know, to say on your show, hey, guys, you know, first off, download Fountain, then download Blue Wallet, then like yeah. buy some Bitcoin through MoonPay, then transfer it back through into Fountain and then send me a boost. You know, that that is friction that is um, limiting the adoption right now. And then the second thing is the education piece, which I've talked about. Like we, we just need to, you know, have more examples of how to ask for support um, and how to build the support into the show content. So, yeah, I think that advertising still has its place in my view, especially like because, yeah, you need to you don't need to make money for a podcast, but it does help. So I think, it, yeah, we're probably still a few years off before the value for value model can entirely replace advertising. But having said that, we do, we have seen some huge boosts on Fountain. I think the record is like 504,000 sats in one payment. So, you know, it, it, wow. is, it is possible to, to get significant income. Okay, here's a very serious question then. I have no oversight of our, um, our pod because Brendo manages it. Was the five hundred and four thousand to us? Because if it is, he's got. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's a serious question though. Like, is it possible for two or three or four podcasters to have access to the same, um, to the, to the same account? Is that? I mean, I haven't done it because I thought I would mess it around. But I have my own that I listen on, and I have you know the wallet in there, but I don't actually control the the pod itself. Yeah, so it is currently possible. And what I can do after the call is I can actually give you uh, access to it as well. But however, we're actually, we're actually, we're actually changing, the, we're changing the architecture a little bit going forward such that instead of you as a Fountain user having your listener wallet and your podcaster wallet, you're just going to have one wallet. And then the way it would work is if you have two hosts, both of those hosts would be in the splits of the podcast okay. value block. So yeah. we're changing that a little bit. Um, so in the next month or so, that'll, that'll go live and that should make things a lot easier. And then you, you'll also be able to do things like, you know, add a fountain user into your splits just by their fountain username, which we think is like quite cool uh, as well. It just adds yeah, like yeah, yeah. some extra creativity into what you can do. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about the splits. Cause I think that's a, it's a really, really important thing. I think it's more probably the most important thing within the app, as far as from my perspective, anyway. Um, so we are the the the, the what do I say? The kind of the premise of our pod is that we do myself and Brenda will do just a chat one week, and another week we'll do an interview with somebody, and that can be from anywhere. Um, but obviously, with the times when we do the interviews, um, if there's any value to be had, that value is also being created by the person we're talking to. Um, and that's where splits come in. So could you t talk the listeners through that, um, how that process works practically? And um, I think we probably need to go into some detail in terms of how we set that up going forward, if that's okay. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so I think the splits are one of the most exciting features of Value for Value and Podcasting 2.0. So at a high level, the splits allow you to portion up the sats that you receive for your podcast and send them to different destinations and you can do this for any number of splits so typically what we will see is let's say there's two hosts of the podcast you might have 50 percent 
for one host, 50% for another host. And actually, there's always a 1% split which goes to podcast index. That's uh, what their fee for actually providing the index and it helps preserve the open nature of podcasting. So there's always that 1% split. Um, so that's the, the basic way of using splits is to just share the income between the hosts. But what's really cool is uh, when you get a little bit more than that. So you can, we, you can also do episode level splits, which means that for each episode, you have a different split. And this will um, remain for forever. You can keep the splits like that. And so if someone comes and listens to that episode in a year, it will still have those splits um, that you set. Some great examples of what's possible here are, for example, let's say you interview a guest that has an amazing open source working on, or they are the founder of a charity that's doing something amazing in your local community. For that episode, you can actually give them a much higher split, let's say, you know, 90% or 100% even. And then you can say to your listeners on that episode, hey guys, if you found, if you found this project really interesting, if you think this project deserves support, like give us, give us a boost and all of the sats will, will go to this guest. And I think that's what's incredibly cool about it is it allows the, not only the host, but the guests to receive money just straight from the podcast player. It removes all of that friction of having to, you know, go to the website, you know, create an account, go and view all this other information. All you have to do is hit boost on your player and uh, you can send it to them. Yeah, and that's cool. And that's something that's something that we've talked about actually setting up for all of our past guests. And then obviously the ones kind of forthcoming is, as Hat said, you know, that they're contributing, I guess, value to our episode. So why shouldn't they uh, receive something for that as well? So, um, yeah, that's really cool. Are, are there many um, people using that functionality yet? Yeah, so the episode level splits, people are starting to use it. Um, so, you know, often what we'll see is the guest will get, you know, uh, 10, 20%. Um, I was actually on a podcast a few months ago where we got given a 10% split or maybe a 20% split. And we um, took all of the sats that we received from that and put it back into new users. So, We've been running a campaign this month um, where new users will uh, get about a thousand sats. And that's in part been funded by the guest yeah. split that I had on that show. So yeah, it's starting to happen. I think this is all so new that, you know, the first step for onboarding a new podcaster to this uh, system, especially if it's a podcaster that doesn't know too much about Bitcoin, the first step is the core concept. Here's your podcaster wallet. Here's how to ask for support. And here's yeah. how your listeners actually support you. So the episode level split is definitely more of an advanced um, feature. But as I said, we're working on a way to just add a fountain user into the splits without having to, you know, post any, you know, uh, lightning node pub key into the, into the split, which is obviously the intimidating <laughs> bit right now. Yeah, so currently that. That's the way people people have to do lightning like node uh, pub key to it for either the host or the guest or any exactly. anybody you want to split with. But yeah, what you're exactly. Trying, what, so, sorry, go on. So, no, sorry, go ahead. Oh, and, so, and what you're trying to go to is say, you know, is let's say it was hats at fountain or whatever it was, and all of a sudden you could just click on the name and it would go to that person within. But obviously they have to be within the fountain app. Um. Um. But. Something else that's just crossed my mind, and I hadn't even considered this at all. Um, let's say you have a podcast that's about, I don't know, cooking. You've got no interest in Bitcoin whatsoever, but all of a sudden you're using Fountain because you know somebody told you about it, and you have this wallet that you have never put any. You don't know about Bitcoin. You don't know about the Lightning Network. Um, you've never looked, but you have this wallet functionality, and people start tipping you in Sats via the lightning network for your cooking podcast all of it so this is this is an orange pill thing as well isn't it this is this is going to bring in a whole bunch of new mm -hmm. users 
hundred mm. percent. We, we, you know, obviously Bitcoiners love fountain because it's such a cool use case for Bitcoin. And, um, so, you know, a large portion of our user base are, you know, Bitcoiners who, who have already been orange pilled, but we do have a significant portion of our user base, which is people that this is their first experience of Bitcoin. They haven't come to Bitcoin because they believe in the monetary philosophy. They haven't come to Bitcoin because it's an investment for them. They've literally come to Bitcoin just so that they can support their favorite podcast. That's all they care about. And so, yeah, yeah. It's, we are onboarding new people to Bitcoin through this system, which is really exciting. The other that's thing awesome. that's cool is that people that top up their fountain wallet tend to top it up regularly. So actually people are not only being onboarded to Bitcoin, they're being onboarded and then they're continuously, you know, buying more Bitcoin just for this use case. Not again, not because of the monetary philosophy and not because of the investment. Obviously, you know, we believe in that and we hope that people will transition and learn more about that uh, afterwards. But yeah, it's a really cool, it's a different way to onboard people. It's for the application as opposed to yeah, the investment. It's a bit like, you know, if you look at like guys at, uh, like Thunder Games or whatever, and they've got the, you know, Bitcoin Bounce and, and, and what else have they got? Um, they've got the snake sat. The car the one, the new one. snake one, sats or whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, which is give a drop yeah, today, I think. Cool. So, but yeah, so people might go on there just to play a game. Um, you know, it's a free game. Obviously, you've got the ads on there and that's driving the revenue. But then all of a sudden they've got, oh, well, I won 15 sats or 25 sats or whatever it is they won. And then they'll just bring it across. So it's just you're much more likely to care about something. It's, it's, it, we've probably all had this uh, um, difficulty in when you're trying to, you know, trying to convince somebody the value of Bitcoin. It's much easier to convince them once they have some. And they're much more yeah. likely to look and try and learn for themselves rather than just listening to what you say or I say. Um, so have you had people who have got no interest in Bitcoin are running their podcasts through Fountain um, have all of a sudden started receiving sats, whatever they might be, and then contacted you guys to say, what is this and why am I getting what, <laughs> what, can I, what do I do with it? So we haven't because one important thing to note is it's opt-in. So if a podcast is not on the Lightning Network, doesn't uh, have a value block in their RSS feed, then you can't send sats to them. Um, and I do think that's quite important. I think it's important that it's opt-in. So yeah, we, we definitely still have a job to go out and find podcasters and convince them that this is uh, a great thing to do, even if they're not interested in Bitcoin. So yeah, that is definitely uh, a challenge, but yeah, we, we're getting there. Joe Rogan next. Yeah, Michael. hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Was it Rogan? Reagan, um, yeah, Joe Reagan. Yeah, I mean, I guess you convince those people with the with the clips and things like that, the, the different functionality that you've not got in, I don't know, Google Podcasts or whatever whatever it is you're using. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea. Yeah, it's not just the uh, value for value and the SAT streaming. There's there's other things that we're doing in Fountain, which we believe makes it a better podcast listening experience. Anyway. Yeah. What about if somebody is listening to a podcast via Breeze? And they decide to boost on Breeze. And you know, the person has has their podcast on Fountain. What happens? What happens there? Yeah, so that's the amazing thing about this system, is it's decentralized. No, we don't control it as Fountain. Um, you're free to use any podcasting app that you want. So as a podcaster, you can receive boosts and messages and sats from any podcasting 2.0 app you can receive from Fountain and you can receive from Breeze. Uh, and if you're a podcaster using the Fountain podcaster wallet, you'll see those messages from all of the different apps. So yeah, it's really cool that it works that way. Um, well, we actually had that because um, I had a conversation with uh, Roy or Rory, someone from Breeze about setting Breeze up um, and he tested it like and sent sats and it appeared in our fountain wallet like that and it was just kind of like yeah cool okay it works thanks <laughs> see i've always loved the idea of um the streaming of sats like and i never thought about it in podcasting at all i thought about my first thought was driving a car like if you're driving a car over a hundred mile road you could be streaming sats every 10 miles and and that could pay for the upkeep of the road and that, that money could be ring fenced 
there'd be essentially no middleman. But now I'm thinking about it, going, you could have a podcast and that integrated into your car, but could have a lightning wallet inside it that could be streaming this out straight from your podcast. And I mean, these things are entirely possible. I mean, I'm not saying they're not difficult. I mean, I couldn't do it, but, um, but it's possible. 100% yeah it's entirely possible and it's working right now you know we're yeah. doing this right now anyone listening to this episode right now might be streaming per minute on on fountain or another podcasting 2.0 app so yeah it's really exciting and I do think you know we're passionate about podcasting as I said before we're passionate about the audio uh spoken word audio as an incredible medium for like learning so we're, that's why we're excited to apply the streaming money concept to podcasting but yeah there's going to be so many other use cases for this and i think it's so early still it's really hit a renaissance i think podcasting like the last few years has kind of really kind of hit hit its straps yeah definitely. i would never never have guessed that how podcasting for me has probably started about three years ago and i just listen to them all the time i've just i've given up so many other things because i much preferred doing this I don't mean I don't mean ours. I mean other people's. Um, oh no, totally. They, um, well, yeah, same for me. It's like tr- when I started, I'm like, oh yeah, this true crime because someone told me about serial or you know, uh, this American Life and all these ones. And then and now it's all pot- Bitcoin, obviously. But I don't know. It's just the way you consume stuff. You can you can just consume audio anywhere. You know, doing things. So- you know, you're m- mowing the lawn or. Or the doing multitasking, absolutely. driving, yeah, 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 because your ears are always there. Anybody who drives for a living, perfect, right? Yeah. Um, the um, so what's what's on the to do list then, Oscar? Like, <laughs> where are you? What's the focus? Where where do you where do you guys? What's the next sort of three, six, twelve months look like for you guys? Yeah, so we've actually just launched a really cool new feature, which we're calling Lightning Comments. And what we're doing is we're turning every boost into a comment that you can actually view on the episode page. And oh, dear, this is that's, really... that's not good for me. <laughs> well, it's not. We haven't, we haven't um, backstopped it, so old <laughs> boosts won't appear. And also, <laughs> you can turn it off as well. This is, this is opt-it. It's opt out if you if you want to turn that off. But the idea is that, you know, when somebody sends a boost to a podcaster, um, it's not just valuable to the host. It's actually potentially valuable to the other people listening. And also coming back, back to this concept that we started with around, you know, how do you find the signal in the noise of all of this podcast content? If I'm following you on Fountain and you leave a boost, to an episode saying oh my god this episode was amazing thank you so much here's 10,000 sats best episode of the month you know and I see that that's signal to me that I should probably go and listen to that episode so by surfacing the boost in that way we think it, it just adds this extra layer uh, to the experience of podcast listening so that's something we've just launched so if you look in the fountain app right now you should see that on the player screen we now have boost and comments and you can also reply to Boost as well, which we think is really cool, so that the podcaster can actually reply in Fountain. That's um, cool. So that's so- something we've just launched, is, which is really exciting. And we're, we're still <clears throat> working with the other apps to figure out the right way to do it. But the idea is that this would be cross-app as well. So if somebody sends you a Boost that's from great. another like pod friend, for example, that would show up as a comment in Fountain. And then hopefully if we can get all the apps to agree on the spec, then a fountain user could reply to a pod friend user over the lightning network. Um, so that's something we're, we're trying to figure out and, and get working across the different apps. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's just totally wild. Yeah. Isn't um, it? So how, how many, how many people are, so let me, what's the difference between st- streaming your pod live and recording it and putting it back then? How does, how does that work on the, co- in the comment side of things? Uh, sorry, say that again. So if we, we, we don't we don't stream live, right? We record on yeah. what do we do, Brendo? <laughs> we we record cup. on and then uh, we, no, we, Logic Pro generally, but on I, excuse me, yeah. With the guests Zoom and then it goes into Logic, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and then it's probably two days before, sort of two or three days before we publish the pod. So if somebody is commenting, obviously there's not that interactive, you know, oh, somebody <laughs> just said something great and I'm gonna see a comment. Do people st- are people podcasting live through Fountain? I don't quite understand how that happens. 
Yeah, so right now we don't support live within Fountain, but a lot of podcasters will um, put their podcast out as as a live recording too on, you know, whether it's Twitch or Twitter or YouTube. Um, one of the things that is in development as well as part of the podcasting 2.0 namespace is the live item tag. So hopefully in the future, we will support that too. So the idea there would be you'd be able to, within Fountain, listen to the live stream of the podcast and then if you miss the live stream after it's done it will just turn into a normal episode so that's something that hopefully we'll be able to add soon because yeah and then and then the idea would be that the boosts and the comments from the live stream are preserved for the episode so you can go through yeah. and see them um, from both sources but yeah that's something that um hopefully we'll be able to add at some point this year yeah, That's I guess cool. I guess I've done that with YouTube in the past, where I've been watching something, but it hasn't been watching it live. And you can go back and look at the. Co- I mean, I don't always do it, but um, you, it's it's possible, I guess. It's just, I mean, I get. Well, I guess that's probably just listener preference, isn't it? They'll if they want to listen live, they'll listen live, and they want to be part of the chat, they'll be part of the chat. And if they're not, they'll they'll listen to recording, and that's the way it should be. Ultimately, mm. it's yeah, a, it's a service for the customer. Um, so they 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 should get to choose how they listen. So how do we yeah, how do how, how do we get featured on the discover page, Oscar? Just just quick question. On yeah, the so check. just yeah, so just um just for the popular clips section, um that is just you know clips that people have liked. So if you create clips and people like them, um you'll be more likely to to show up there. Yeah, right, okay. So no underhanded sats or anything. Sorry, I said no sats under the table. He's no, he's, n- not yet, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's entirely shameless. Oh, um, entirely, entirely. Yeah, no, that's that, that's awesome. Um, I'm just cool. conscious of our time. Yeah, um, yeah. The uh, yeah, is there is there anything that you would like to tell people that are listening to this that we haven't covered? Or where, if not, where would you like to send them to to learn a bit more or either your own or the Fountain pages? Yeah, I think just to anyone listening who hasn't tried out Fountain, it would be great if you just gave it a go. You know, it's we think we've built a great listener experience. You can import from Spotify or Apple or OPML. Um, so yeah, just if you haven't tested it out, just download Fountain. Uh, fountain.fm is the website with the links all there. And yeah, if you have any feedback, uh, always looking for feedback on the app. So if you have any feedback at all, just email me. My email is oscarfountain.fm. And yeah, we're trying to build, you know, the best podcast listening experience. So if you want something, we'll build it for you. Just send me an email. That's awesome. I can testify to that because I had an issue when I logged out and couldn't log back in and I contacted and I got a personal reply. So um, that's probably where this came from in the first place, I guess. But um, Mate, thank you very much for taking the time to come on. Um, early morning in, in England. How is it? Is it grey or is it okay? It's a, it's actually really sunny today. It's great. It's, this week has been like the first week of sunshine this year. So it's everyone's happy. It's just in London, when the sun comes out, everything changes. It's completely different. <laughs> city, so, yeah. Well, if it, if it makes you all feel better over there, it is pissing it down in Australia right now and it's been pissing it down all summer. So... Um, yeah, it's not, it's yeah. not good. Enjoy, enjoy your sunshine. We flipped, we flipped. All right, guys. Well, yeah, thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully talk again soon. Thanks, thanks Oscar. Much. Cheers, mate. Hey guys, if you made it this far, thanks so much for listening. Um, the plan with the pod is to do sort of guests one week and um, myself and Brendo the other week, so hopefully that's working for you. If you don't like one of them, just listen to the one you do like. Um, if you want a little bit more um, information from us, you can find it at uh, bitcoin-first.com forward slash learn. 